Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, how excited are you today knowing that God loves you? And we began to talk about and show you the character of the one who loves you and the character of his love. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make the demand for our daily bread? Have this mindset. He loves you. And all these things I've been teaching you is the character of him and of his love. So in that mindset, can you make the demand for your daily bread knowing that he surely would give it to you. Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, expect a miracle today. Now, I've been showing you from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and from verse 4 overlooking at the character of love i'm sharing this with you so that you will know what to expect from god who is love and then number two because this is what we see in him you remember he said looking up to jesus the author and finisher of our faith i remember many years ago many many years ago i began to search my heart and for what love really is because i've seen a lot of things happen in my personal life and i began to make up my mind for what i want for my future and one of the things i decided on i said i'm going to learn how to love and where do i learn it from and i made up my mind i will learn it from the best <laughs> Is God and who is the best? Love Himself. So I began to pray. I said, Lord, teach me how to love. Teach me how to. Many years ago, many, many years ago, I think I was still a teenager then. Yeah, I was in the university. And I was like, Lord, teach me how to love. And over the years, so sometimes you pray a prayer. I, I, no, when I prayed that prayer, I, I didn't know what I was expecting, really. You know, I can't remember. I don't even think, maybe not. I was expecting one day I'll have a vision. Someone will come and sit on a chair and say, my son, you have to teach me, take your pen and paper. Number one. No. See, when, when you pray a prayer like that, when you pray a prayer like that, the one you pray to who heard you, begin to orchestrate your life one of the prayers I, I i used to pray then and i taught many people around me to pray the same prayer is lord give me righteous friends give me righteous friends and you look back you know over the years and realize wow god's been faithful where that is concerned he's, he's been so faithful and then he's always protected us He's always protected me from, from evil, from unrighteous people for some reason. I've had experience where I would have gotten involved with wrong people, but for some reason, he, he just came in and, you know, and so you look back and said, wow, I'm really not out there. <laughs> Praise God. No, I'm not. Why? Now, not the same thing with you. But you see, you're not taking advantage of it. We've got him to our rescue. We've got him to help us. Every time he's there. He sees what people plan behind you. He sees. He hears every discussion. And he doesn't have to come and tell you, my son, this is what these people are discussing and planning against. No, because sometimes those things will hurt your heart even before they display it. See that now? But then he's there protecting you and protecting you. so i asked the lord then i said lord teach me how to love and i began to now how did he teach me he began to show me himself he began to show me himself and the more i see him see looking onto jesus the more i see him 
not just hear God is love. God, love is this. No, I began to see it in here. Just like when Moses went up that mountain, he came back with 10 commandments. Today we say 10 points. But you see, it took him 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of God to come out with that slate. It has 10 statements written on it. Sure, Moses is not going to be looking at those commandments the way everybody else will look at it. He, he sees the character of God. He sees the personality of God. So when, when, when you read, thou shalt not kill, he sees the one who is too big, doesn't need to kill. Why? See that now? So the Lord began to show me himself and I began to see him. And, and, and that's how I began to learn of him. And so like last month, you know, we we're doing broadcast with my wife and I, I said something on air. I said, I told my wife when we were getting married, I said, listen, I'm going to love you exactly as God loves you. Now you look at that statement, it looks so big. I'm like, how can you say that? Now that's because many, many years ago, I had come to that place that I told myself, you don't know what love is. Accept it. And so, having accepted that, I went to him and said, teach me how to love. And he didn't teach me by giving me a book to read. He began to show me himself. And so I began to learn from him. So when I made that statement years later to my wife, that I'll love you exactly the way, that's the same thing I said to my children, I'll love you the same way God loves you. Because I learned from him. So it's not just talking and trying to do it. No, that's what I know. So, so what, I'm, what I was actually saying to them is, the only place you can compare the kind of love I have for you, and the same love you give to everybody. You'll find it in God. Now, that's the only place you'll find it. So you want to compare this, how does this person love me like this? The next place you'll see that kind of love is in God. Is that boastful? No, it's not. It's plain truth. Why? Because that's my teacher. That's where I heard from. You can only be like the person who taught you. <laughs> God. I didn't learn love from any man. No, I didn't. I couldn't have. Praise God. Yeah, but 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 he began to teach. See, so as we learn from him, we are becoming love. And as we become love, we begin to transfer that same character. You know, we, we, we say these things most times. We say, look, <clears throat> If you've been in, in an abusive relationship or you've been a victim of an abusive relationship, it is so easy for you to abuse another person. Yes, if, if a child who grew up in a home where the dad used to beat the mom, for example, there is a high tendency that that child will end up beating his wife. Very high tendency. Why? Because that's all he knows. Even though when he saw his dad beating his mom, he hated his dad for that. See that now? But you see, the fact that you hated it didn't stop you from learning that that's how to discipline a woman. That that's the training that's going on. This is how to discipline a woman. Now, if you don't remove that teaching deliberately, and not just remove it, replace it with truth. You see, because all that while you saw that happen, you were like, that is wrong. This is wrong. Don't, don't stop doing it. You have been mentored. You are learning from it. You are becoming it. Yes, that's what's going on. You are becoming it. But I never beat to say, because you've not had a wife yet. It is the day you now have a wife that shares the same space with you. One day, your hand will just go up. And you're like, did I just do that? And instead of learning immediately and seeking help, 
you start telling yourself that but she's the one it's because of what she did it's because of what she did that made me to do this so sometimes we just replay an experience that we have been nurtured in we, we you see you see it happen in your life you see replaying your father's life you see yourself doing things this is the same way your father used to do it. and not because your father sat you down and said this is how to do it what's going on you have been mentored so if those things are wrong because some of them are good if those things are wrong if you don't deliberately replace it with another mentorship you will end up because see when you learn what is right you become it so that's how to check out the old the, the old bad things in you. so when you begin to learn how to love from god now that's why i'm showing you the scripture because that's what he did to me when you begin to learn, I, I we've not finished reading that verse. Well, look at the last statement there. And that's verse 8, the first part of verse 8. It says, love never fails. Strong words. Love never, never. Now, never means never. It doesn't happen. Love never fails. What? Oh, statements. Ah, love never fails. I used to love this person before, but I don't love him no more. Uh -uh, love never fails. And but even God sometimes he says, look, yes. Love is character. Now, one of the things love will do is discipline. Love will discipline. Love will correct. Love will put people in their place. But it still doesn't mean love failed. Now, you may stop receiving the favor of love. You see, because you didn't receive the love properly. Because even Jesus said, when you go to a, you know, sending out the service, when you go to a place, if they reject you, he said, dust off your feet and leave. Because love doesn't accept dishonor. It doesn't mean you stop loving them, but they will stop enjoying the favor of your love. Now, why they will stop enjoying the favor of your love is because now they, they actually shut up their receiving end. That's what happens. So when they repent, love is still there. And that's the truth. When they repent, love is still there. And you, you keep manifesting that love to the measure to which you are allowed to manifest. You see? Now that's why everything is regulated by love himself. <laughs> and he is giving us his spirit. And the spirit is the spirit of love. That's why I tell people, you can't, number one, you can't accept love from someone who doesn't even have it. I don't believe I cannot give you love. Anyone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit in him and active, I told you this last week, cannot give love. Why? Because this Holy Spirit is the one God has given to us and his job is to share the love of God in our hearts. So the same one who makes God love is the same one that has been given to us. And so we, we now begin to depend on him to regulate our love. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he, he regulates it. So he tells you, don't give that person money anymore. It's not because you hate the person now. No, it's because he knows what he's dealing with that person about. So you just simply obey. And that obedience is an act of love even towards that person. Because <laughs> the person is going to turn out better, not even with you. Because sometimes, you know, maybe you used to show someone favor and then you hear the Lord say, stop, stop doing that to that person. He said, okay okay and then you you withdraw and the person goes 
Can you imagine? You that used to give me this thing every day. Now, now you don't give me again. Eh? Blah, 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 blah. What are you doing? You're obeying the Lord. And the person, you know what? I'm not even talking to you again. Please go. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Okay. Because you're obeying the Lord. And the person goes. Now, that action of yours will cause the person to enter into a new place and a new realm. Like that person is a child of God. Eventually, the person will get into where he will be fulfilling his destiny. And it doesn't have to be that the person will come back to you and say, Ah, thank you for that thing you did to me that time. Or if not, I wouldn't have. The person doesn't necessarily have to come back to tell you. The person doesn't even have to re realize it. But you just make sure you're being the one who's guiding. Because that's how he teaches us how to walk in his love. That's how he teaches us his character. Love. And, and, and when we begin to apply this in every human relationship, now first and foremost, you have to grow in it. But in growing in it, you have to first of all make up your mind that this is what is good for me. And I want it. And that's why I read all those scriptures. You look at this and this is the character of love. This is the character of God. How do I measure up in this? Where my spouse is concerned, my children, my siblings, my neighbors. How do I measure up with this? You ask yourself all those questions. I mean, you, you, you look at each one. That, that's the counsel I'm giving you. You look at each one. Love suffers long. Mm. I have a short temper. Mm -hmm. Me, I can't take nonsense. Once I will deal with it, I will deal with you. I have work to do. Mm. Love is kind. You know what kindness is? I kind. I don't think I'm kind. You have work to do. Love does not envy. Do I envy? And, and sometimes the Holy Spirit is there to help you, Lord. See, that's why that's we read the Bible in the Holy Ghost. We, we read the scriptures in the Holy Spirit. So, so do I envy? Lord help me. And he begins to bring things to your mind. Say, ah, ah. <laughs> Lord, I'm sorry. Woo. I'm sorry doesn't mean it has changed. But I'm sorry begins the process of repentance. <laughs> so it doesn't parade itself. Oh, I want to be the top prophets. I want everybody to know that I'm the one that prophesied this thing. <laughs> Nah. Nah. As long as it has come to pass and everyone is rejoicing in it, that's just enough. That's enough. And number two, the fact that you knew ahead of time, it means the Holy Spirit is working in you. That's enough. It doesn't matter who sees you as a prophet or not. That has nothing to do with your life. I'm telling you the truth. Our obedience is to Him. Many will witness it. But if you begin to tilt your life towards how many people see your obedience and because you want them to know and to hail you, then your downfall will be great. Because the same way men hail you today, I'm telling you the same men tomorrow who say crucify him. It happened to Jesus. That's why Jesus knew, the Bible said he knew what was it meant, so he was unwilling to give himself to you. So you love people, but then expect love from God. Now we, we demand, because we show as a seed, so we demand a harvest, you understand what I'm saying? But you don't demand with your words, you say, you must love me back, no. You show with faith in your heart that they will see and begin to act accordingly. But then when they fall short of it, that's man for you. God is surely never going to fall short of it. And, and, and truth be told, God always rewards it when you walk like Him.
He always rewards it. He always, always, always rewards it. That's the truth. Because love never fails. The expectation of love never fails. Do you know that? You see, see, People will fail, but don't let your love to fail. How do you know love has failed? When you stop believing in love. You know, you know what? I have tried. I have loved people. I have done this for people, but they always pay me back. I have tried. You know what? I'm done. I'm not doing that again. Guess what has happened to you? It has failed. But when it's connected to him, because he doesn't fail, it will never fail. You know why it will never fail? Because he is going to keep spoiling you. He's going to keep energizing you. And you will be seeing the rewards of walking in love. Brothers and sisters, there are rewards. Great reward for walking in love. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Our time is up. Mm. May the Spirit of the Lord fill your heart with His truth. And may you be exposed to His personality. Walk in love. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.